myself as a better human being. Mm -hmm. And I learned something from each one of them. And so it's extremely difficult for me to say that I liked this one better than the other. It's not true. I would say that Jane Pittman loomed above the rest because she was the eldest. She was the eldest. She was the eldest. And she was wiser, having lived as long as she did. And because she was the grandmother to me that I never knew. And for those reasons, she gets some extra points. <laughs> but they have all, I have become, in fact, the sum total of every single one of those women. You won a Tony for playing Carrie Watts in the play. Yes. What is the class? Oh, we fought a lot. I, I, mean, I fought a lot with him. What's that, Ms. Tyson? I would not want to fight with you about anything. It was, I didn't think it was humanly possible. Yeah. You mean portraying her on screen? Because, I mean, look at this theater. Yes. How can you go from this expansive, broad character that reaches to the last row in the balcony to this miniature screen? How do you do that? I've never had that experience before. And so I thought it was virtually impossible to do. And I fought with him. I mean, I got angry with him. <laughs> uh -oh. Finally, I decided to give up. Gave up. And let him do whatever he felt like. It was going to work anyway. <laughs> Michael, what was that conversation like with Ms. Tyson? You approached her. It wasn't a conversation. <laughs> 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 well, Cicely's already mentioned the 1,100 seat Sondheim Theater in which she and Vanessa play their, their characters. And in the theater, uh, it's, it's often about the body and the gesture. And Vanessa was trained as a dancer, Cicely has dance training. Um, actors like Blair, who uh, you know, commands the screen and the stage, they know how to use their bodies on stage, and that's what helps express the story and the language to an audience. Television, that, that important gesture is the close-up, and it's right here. And I don't know if you could watch tonight, but when that camera would go deep into the dark well of Mother Watts's eyes, and you would see the depth of this sadness and loneliness, and you, you saw it when, he, when the son yelled at her at the, at the end of the first act when she lost Callie Davis. But that's something that you can't see on stage, mm -hmm. to, unless you're maybe in these front two rows. And, and to, it was just such a great uh, experience to watch these two ladies calibrate their performances that they had built so carefully in the rehearsal hall. And, and share it for six and a half months on Broadway, and then to bring it to the nuance and shape of the camera. It was, it was thrilling. So what was that one Even thing? Even though we did fight. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one thing that you told Miss Tyson that convinced her that this would be? He never convinced <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave up the fight. You just gave up the fight. I said, I'm not going to fight with you anymore. <laughs> I, I think it, it, at times she was having an out-of-body experience, uh -huh. and she said, I feel like I'm losing the character, mm -hmm. because it felt so different, physically, rhythm, music-wise. But I do recall when we were out of Bountiful, this was our second <laughs> week of shooting, Vanessa was there, Blair was up at the tree, and I said, you know, even for you to raise your eyebrow, what you do with your eyes, and yeah. how you twist your mouth to whatever Jesse May says, that yeah. says so much to us. Right. And of course, given all of the great screen work that she's done, she was like, oh yeah, I know, I, I remember that. <laughs> so right. she just went to her instrument yeah. and 
and, and just did it so exquisitely. I know. Can I just say one character thing ahead, which shows the reason why she is such an amazing, uh, smart actress uh, and woman. On stage, yes, you have to use your whole instrument, yes, you use your voice, you have to capture an audience. Her choice, and I know that people noticed it, when she was on screen, you could see a little white hair. Yeah. Some people would say, oh my God, did they not pluck that? But that was her <laughs> choice. They added that white hair wow. to, to allow people to wow. notice it, to notice her age, to notice that she's at an age now where she doesn't care about plucking it. <laughs> and that informs the character. And all of a sudden, you're, you're tuned into somebody that's so realistic, and reminds you of so many things that, oh, as, as a woman, I'm a certain age, I always think about that. But also, uh, you know, remembering your grandmother, remember yeah. the little things that happen when you age that you embrace. Right. And that was her choice as an actress, besides the, the wonderful attention and, and doing the words marvelously. But those choices to add that hair to her chin gives her right. another dimension to take And to go along with that, and on Broadway, Listen, mother wants to appear to shed 20 years. Because yeah. as she's getting closer to Bountiful, she's getting more tough right. with her little girl. Yeah. Well, that kind of makeup adjustment, subtle makeup adjustments, mm -hmm. were done by the, the actors in our fabulous makeup crew. Right. Um, and that's actors using their craft to help tell the story, whether it's on stage or on our screen. Vanessa, did you have any trepidation about bringing this? You know, to the small Not place. at all. I mean, uh, it, it was gold on Broadway. We knew what we had. Also, Michael, uh, who has worked with, I mean, Hallie is, is Horton's daughter. Michael worked with Hallie for years. There was a comfort level there. Comfort level, and I knew that, you know, when it's your first time, you want to do your best. You want right. to try your hardest, and you want to prove that you can make the transition. Mm -hmm. And he did it flawlessly. So that was not brilliantly, I might add. Although I know I said Moody was played by Cuba Gooding Jr., mm -hmm. uh, great, fantastic actor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blair Underwood, isn't he incredible? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hard to be an actress and, and to treat her or say the things that the character has knowing her and loving her so much. Certainly. Yeah. So. You don't know how hard it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one something that's fascinating that I was just watching it tonight, she finally escapes Jesse May. Yes. She she gets away from at the Houston bus station, something she's never done before. She's on the bus. And what does she do? What does she talk about? Almost half the bus ride, just Jesse. Right. And look, she's obsessed. And I think in some ways, feels so heartbroken, it feels such a failure that her daughter-in-law does not love her any more than she does. Which then begins us to go even deeper, deeper, deeper into the past, the further away we get from Houston, the closer we get to that. Petrified. Every day I walked into that rehearsal room, I was absolutely petrified. And I saw that they were petrified as well. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think I saw it. I saw it and I knew I was in trouble. But it is I saw it. I the day the fire alarms went off all the time, we were afraid that day. But the fact of the matter is that we were all venturing into something quite new, um, something uh, that I've heard Hallie say she dreamed would happen but didn't think it would happen. And so what you do, at least what I do, when I'm in a, in a situation like that, I just let go and I let God have it. And I move on with divine guidance. No matter how afraid she might have been, she always showed up to rehearsal <laughs> and, and, and was there early and ready to work and would be the first to laugh when she made a mistake. You know, that, that's the other thing. I think humor helps a lot, helps us get through our adversity. You've been on stage, you've been on stage, I've been on stage. 
when you say that you're frightened or you're, uh, you're you, you become immobilized and you can't say something or do something, that most people don't believe that. They think that if you are able to go on the stage and open your mouth and say anything, and do it for year after year after year, that you're a pro, that it's simple. It's a simple thing for you to do. I don't know about anybody else, but every time I put my foot on the stage, it's a new moment. Mm -hmm. The audience is new. Everything is new. And so if you are not in a position where you can give what they came for, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yes. You free yourself. And once you do that, you can do anything. I think we have a tendency to sometimes allow ourselves out of various and sundry reasons to do things that are unnatural, that are not true, to cover that moment. But if you let all of that go, you have freed yourself, so then you are allowed to blossom. You know exactly what this is, how she explored her relationship with her father. She misses her father, she talks about her father, what he did for her, for her son. But then he also made sure that she did not have the love of her life to live with. Ray John Murray, he's the one that made that go away. So when she gets to Bountiful, she says, my father was a peculiar man. She's a southern, gracious woman, but she sang volumes when she says that. And she stumbled upon that as she was just exploring the house and the yard in that rehearsal. Uh, that you have to do it because it stretches you. You mentioned Othello right now, I, and, and being petrified. I sat on that, the idea of that for a week because I was terrified of it. I kept hearing myself tell my kids, do the things that scare you, so I had to do it. <laughs> so now I'm in the middle of it, but it's, it demands every aspect of your instrument. Um, you know, your, your intellect with the words, your body, vocally, physically, all of those, the emotion, emotional range. You don't get that. Uh, well, first of all, let me say it's your foundation. Because if you understand how to do that, when it comes time to do camera work, you can s step in at any point. It's all, uh, you know, out of order. No continuity when you shoot. And we have to mention. Part of it was the joy of getting to see it in this new form, but she also used it as a moment to be aspirational with a group of college students that we had there that day and making the point that if Carrie Watts can make this journey home against these insurmountable odds, and if Miss Cicely Tyson at this stage, rich stage in her career, can go on a movie set for 15 hours a day, 15 day shoot, and create this kind of performance, then this is what we have ahead of us, and that we should reach for our dreams and realize our potential. I would like to do one of my father's plays, and I would like to do it with Black Cat. And I know that my father, who had so much respect for you, would want you to play the lead role. I said to her, who is your father? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Gordon, Gordon, I think I fell off. <laughs> and I said, and what is the play? <laughs> A trip to Bountiful. Well, then I really fell off the chair. The point is this, I was not, I never ever dreamed that it would be A Trip to Bountiful. I simply was saying to him, I want one more role, because I have been really blessed in my career. Yes. And I, I'm not going to be greedy. I just want one more. <laughs> if I do one more, then I'll bow out gracefully. I didn't expect it to be tripped about to food, and that was the shocking. It turned out to be. I waited 26 years before it happened. <laughs>